Hi guys, this is Jordan with Motion Array, and today we're going to be taking a look at green screen keying inside of Premiere Pro. There's a lot of different applications that you might want to use this effect for. It can be a really fun effect if you're doing a tutorial, but it can also be used to have a specific portion of your film world changed and altered to things that aren't available to you in real life. The great news is that you can do a really solid keying effect all inside of Premiere. So let's dive in and get started. I need to start out by saying that this tutorial is how to key out a green screen in Premiere, not how to properly light and set up a green screen. The information we're going to be going over assumes that you set up your green screen shot in such a way to give you the best result possible. But for your benefit, we're going to be going over a situation that's less than ideal so that we can see how to work around a few problems. Let's start by bringing our clip into our timeline. You can see off the bat our footage is decent, but it's far from perfect. We've got a good looking section over here, but also a lighter section over here with some wrinkles in the fabric, and then a different color of green with even more wrinkles in the fabric. And to top it all off, a rim around our subject that's not even green, it's black, so it won't key out. You want to avoid these kinds of things as much as possible, but don't worry, we can still get a good key out of this situation. There's a variety of different keying options that you can choose from, but if you don't have a third party plugin, then my suggestion would be to use Ultra Key, which comes included in Premiere Pro. To find it, go to Effects, then type in Ultra Key. Now, drag and drop it onto your clip. Awesome! Now we have an Ultra Key option inside of our effect controls. To start it off, we're going to go inside our Ultra Key settings and choose a green color that we're going to use to key out. You can do this manually, but there's a way better option. You can see that there's this little eyedropper here. Click on it, and now the next thing you click on will sample the color for your green screen key. So bring it over to your green screen footage, and then choose an average looking section of your green screen. I prefer to choose something near my subject, because that's going to be the hardest area to deal with later on. Now you can see that our footage has been partially keyed out, but it's not looking great. At this stage, to get some more information, I like to change my output mode. Go to your output mode and change it to alpha channel. When you do that, this is what you'll see. Everything that appears in complete white will be visible in your final composition. It's the stuff that doesn't get keyed out. And the area that's perfectly black is the portion that's completely transparent. But then you have this sort of gray bit at some points. This is your signal for a poorly keyed area. It'll be sort of transparent, but definitely won't be nice to look at. And if we add something underneath, we can see a little bit more about what this key looks like. I like to add a solid white because if there's any green bits floating around, it can help make an easy distinction. And now we can see something interesting. We can't really see any green in our shot, but we can see all these shadows from the wrinkles and creases in our green screen. This is why it's important to set up your shot right to begin with. Now, our job is to try to get rid of these areas and make a nice, clean key. What'll help you out a lot next is to go through your footage and see what boundaries of the frame your subject crosses. If there's areas of your frame that your subject simply doesn't touch, you can actually mask around them completely. This will help to make the process of keying a lot easier and faster. Go to your opacity setting and then click the pen tool. Now, click and drag at different points around the frame to choose what you want to be included in your final composition. For us, we're going to cut around the black border from the smaller of the two green screens. Once you connect the last dot and make a full circuit, you'll have a mask. Now we have a smaller and more manageable area to deal with. From here we can scroll down and start to look at the different sections of our ultra key refinement. It's important to know that each situation will vary. And this is not a one-size-fits-all effect. You'll need to do a lot of trial and error in order to find what works best for your footage. But we're going to go through all the parameters so that we can get a hold of what they do and how they can impact your footage. We'll start out with a matte generation. Click on the little triangle and the drop-down menu will give us the parameters that we can change. Let's start with transparency. If you bring it all the way down to zero, the clip is completely opaque. It's like it was never keyed out to start with. But if you bring it up all the way, it'll start to make your subject transparent, and it'll give you a really strange look. Your goal is to bring this up as high as possible so that you can make your background as transparent as it can get. But you want to stop shy of any point that your subject starts to become transparent. You'll see this when parts of your subject start to turn black. You want your subject to stay perfectly white. So try and find the tipping point and just stay a little bit shy of it. Next is the highlight and shadows. These two control how drastic the key works in each of the two areas of your footage, the brighter highlights and the darker shadows. Depending on what in your clip is wrong will determine how much of each you apply. But like before, you're trying to get rid of as much of the background as possible while not impacting your subject. If you play with these values too drastically, like we do here with the shadows, then you'll start to see some artifacting in your subject. This is a dead giveaway for your green screen, and it looks terrible. So make sure that when you're changing values to go back between viewing options every so often to make sure that things are looking right. Next is tolerance, which simply refers to how wide around the color green you selected for keying will be included with the changes that you're making. Finally, the pedestal is where you'll likely see the most improvement in your clip. 
Pedestal has to do with the blacks in your clip, and lowering this for your key will really help to clear out those areas of your green screen that have those gross shadows that we mentioned before. And there we go, after going through just one section, we already have a satisfactory key, but we can still make some improvements. So let's go through the rest of the parameters that we can work with. The next section is the matte cleanup, which like its name suggests is making some fine tuning adjustments to the newly keyed subject that we have. Choke is the first, and this option will literally allow you to bring the edge of your key in around your outline of your subject. This can really help if you have an annoying green fringe around your subject. But it's important to remember that this is a really harsh change, and if you choke too much you can get really drastic edges which will make your key feel really unnatural. But that's where the next section can help. Soften helps to feather the edges of your mask. Like choking, too much of this can make your mask feel unnatural, so test both of them out to see what you can get away with. Lastly, contrast and midpoint work pretty closely together. Contrast will do exactly what it does in other applications, and separate the distance between your whites and your blacks, and make them a little bit more extreme. And the midpoint will just change the central location of where these two ends are being separated from. Your mileage may vary, but these two tend not to make as big of a change. And now we move on to spill suppression. This will help to clean up any areas of your footage where there may be a little bit of green, but aren't necessarily on the edge of your mask. Sometimes, stray splotches of green can end up on your subject and this is where you go to clean that up. The desaturation slider can help to clear up these splotches by raising it up as high as you can before you start to see your subject lose color. Increasing the spill slider will also help you to take away any of those last detail green areas that are causing problems. And lastly, range and luma will help to make some minor changes to coloration and brightness in order to isolate these green areas. Finally, the last section is called color correction, and it doesn't have much to do with getting rid of your green screen so much as it does with stylizing your footage post key. These corrections will only impact the remaining keyed in mask. So here you can make changes to the saturation, hue, and brightness, and you don't have to worry about impacting the quality of your key. And there you go, after all of that you should hopefully have a nicely keyed out green screen clip. Now let's try dragging some footage beneath this clip to see how it looks in context. Depending on the purpose of your footage, you may need to change the way that it looks in order to match your setting. If you're doing a stylized tutorial video, then you won't need to worry so much about fooling people into believing that you're actually in front of a big yellow, black, and white moving pattern. Just do some light color adjustments and make it look nice. But if you're trying to make your audience think you're actually in a different location than you are, then I'd encourage you to play around and take more time to try and convincingly match your exposure levels and color between your green screen and your other footage. But something that can help if you're looking for that last little boost to sell your shot is to add an overlay over both pieces of footage. Here I have some light leaks that we're going to put in, and let's bring down the opacity so that it looks a little bit more subtle. Integrating an effect over top of both pieces of footage can sometimes help to sell the effect that the two pieces of footage are actually one. But that's it, that's how you key out your green screen footage in Premiere Pro. I hope that you found this video helpful. Thank you so much for watching, and as always, I hope to see you next time.